Since 2010, Steph Curry has been fraught with ankle sprains, and even though he's had multiple surgical repairs and access to the best rehab specialists in the world, he still keeps spraining his ankle. But why? But first, to understand his particular ankle issue, you have to understand his history with it. Because Steph Curry really hasn't gone one season in the NBA without having ankle problems or some lingering effect from them, starting in 2010 with multiple sprains to the point where he needed his ligament to be repaired surgically. And to surgically repair the ligaments, you can do that in a few ways. One is just to cut a hole in them and sew them back together, which simply just tightens the ligament and gives the ligament fresh edges to heal, which is what it looked like Steph Curry had done in the first place. The next option is since synthetic or cadaver ligaments actually screwed into the ankle to replace the defective ligament. Now this is awesome for stability, but also can cause massive scarring and tightness, and it also takes quite a while to recover, which is why it's usually a secondary option in a lot of cases, especially for athletes. However, even after having surgery, Curry still had repeated spraining or instability issues, leading him to go back to surgery for an arthroscopy procedure to look inside the joint to clean up debris with a small camera. And, and that's when things really started looking up for him, but in reality, it's when the real enemy finally started showing its face. Because during that procedure, his surgeon actually stressed his ankle and found that the repair was strong, that there was nothing structurally wrong with his ankle. So good news, right? No need for replacement ligament, no issues with repair, right? All good. Wrong. Because the fact that his ligament was holding up under stress in a controlled environment tells you that the problem is in his nerve receptors or proprioceptors, not his tissues, which actually is much more of a chronic and difficult problem to fix. And what that all means is that the nerve receptors in Steph's ligaments can't get information up to his brain fast enough to tell his brain where his foot is on the court. And even though that only accounts for fractions of a second of a delay, it's enough for your body to misstep or a muscle to misfire and to roll over on that limb. And the name for that syndrome is called functional ankle instability because it's only when you ask the ankle ligaments to work in a non-controlled situation does the issue really present itself. That's a big reason why you still see them in braces, not only for the support that they provide, but their biofeedback. Remember, every time he moves around or cuts, those struts on his brace contact his skin and thus send a signal up to his brain about what's happening down in his foot and his ankle. And since those braces contact all around his leg and ankle, that's so much more biofeedback than he'd just get with a faulty ankle ligament. So the million dollar question is, why not everybody just wear ankle braces all the time? That's a question I get a lot in clinic as well as in the comments section of these videos. And the problem is number one, mobility, which they'll restrict. I mean, that's their job. You're gonna lose some mobility when you put them on. And number two, it's dependency. Because once your body gets used to all of that feedback and all of that stability, it's gonna have a hard time making all those quick adjustments and just having the confidence to make those adjustments without them. And that's why when you do have an ankle sprain or really bad ankle injury, it is so important to rehab properly so that your body can learn to do those calculations again on its own. And so you have enough confidence in yourself to kind of go out there and make as hard a cuts and play as hard as possible, even if you still end up needing a brace. And so speaking of needing a brace, if you're somebody that has been diagnosed with a grade three ankle ligament tear that really hasn't healed, well, sometimes it's just necessary to wear one because that's literally the only thing holding your ankle and if you don't, it'll be when, not if, you end up breaking that ankle. But the question on a lot of Curry fans' minds, you know, will Steph need further surgery and is his career at risk? Well, I think as long as he wears the braces, he's probably gonna be okay. He's such a great athlete otherwise, he just makes up for the mobility in other ways. And in terms of further surgery, you know, honestly, these days we do have much more low profile replacement ligaments, which act almost as an internal brace and don't require as much of recovery. But remember, it is still surgery and there's still risk. So do you really wanna deal with the enemy you don't know or the enemy you do? And what about the Curry line of shoes? Do they have anything to do with his ankle instability? Well, uh, frankly, in my opinion, most of the new flow models aren't made with instability in mind. Now, flow foam is great for getting quick jumpers off and just kind of the structure and shape of the Curry flow line is just wicked for shifty, nimble movement. And those are all things he's known for. But because Steph Curry is usually in braces, it's not as key for the Curry flow 
low line to provide that much stability because he's just getting in other places. So they usually make these shoes for all the other parts of his game, which is, like I said, shifty, nimble footwork and getting off those incredibly quick jumpers, oftentimes before the camera is even able to pan to him with the ball. However, if you do want to take a deeper dive into the Curry Flow line, especially the newest Curries and some of the retro Flow Tro type shoes, make sure you click into this playlist up above and subscribe down below. Respect to rubber and foam and nerve endings. I'll see you in the next one.